my life has been such that every five years, there has been a different challenge. And I've had to do control all dealt to my life. And on that note, I'll give a brief introduction of myself. My name is Anjali, and I have been working in the corporate world for about 27 years, to be precise. Uh, worked in different organizations, the best, world's best known corporates like Coca-Cola, Bank of America, IBM, and now I'm working for an environment consulting company. And I head their talent acquisition, learning and development and human resources for Asia Pacific. It has been a very challenging journey and um, full of learnings, full of ups and downs. And that is why I resonated a lot with Control All Dell, uh, because I've had to do this many times in my life and move on. My, uh, something that kept me going in my life was a saying by my father in very early days of my life was that a smooth sea never makes a good sailor. And every time the sea became rough, that came to my mind and that got me moving. Control all dealt to my mind is a, is a metaphor. It is a metaphor because um, it, it, it involves about bringing about a paradigm shift in the mindset change. I think that is something which is evident and inevitable to, in today's world. The world is changing at a very, very fast pace. And I think all of us sitting here, we have no choice but to bring about that change in our lives. On that note, before I go on any further, I would like to play a small video to give you a flavor of what is how the world is changing. just a glimpse of how the world is changing. And um, haven't we witnessed that if we look around in the past 10 years or so, the world has gone through a very, very dramatic change. Who knew 10 years back that smartphones are going to change the way we live and the way we work? I think today all of us are almost having a kind of a love affair with our cell phones because we eat, drink, and sleep with our cell phones, isn't it? The first face that we see in the morning is that of our cell phone. And uh, we, we just can't stop looking at it. And some of them are so addicted that they wake up in the middle of the night and have a look at their cell phones. Um, that is the kind of world that we live in. Smartphones have not only changed our personal lives, but have thrown many industries or many businesses out of business. So much so. And you would remember that uh, digital cameras that everybody used to cherish and we used to insert a camera reel in that and we used to be so proud of the owners of digital cameras are no longer in the business. It has impacted even the business travel industry to a very large extent because a lot of business happens on FaceTime or on WhatsApp. I've seen too many business proposals going on WhatsApp. So that is the kind of change that has happened. It is not only the business world that has changed, but our world in terms of climate change, in terms of global warming, in terms of population explosion, all of this has changed. You know, till a few years back, we used to just hear of these concepts that, you know, there will be global warming, that there will be population explosion. But we are witnessing it in our day-to-day -day life. And how we are witnessing it is that it has started impacting our life. I think all of us in Delhi witnessed the worst, worst winter of our life. After 125 years, the temperature became so low and it made all of us shiver. Isn't it the result of global warming and climate change? So that means it is impacting our life. So I think it's time we step back and think what needs to change. The world is changing. And if we don't change, I think we are going to be misfits in the times to come. Another, another aspect that I wanted to introduce you to was that the world is not only changing, but I think there are a lot of disruptors in the world today. Disruption of all kinds. For example, um, disruption in the sense that we witness that the world's largest cab, cab facility providing companies do not own a single car. The next generation car, which will be engineless, and it's going to be manufactured by a non-automotive manufacturer. I think some of us are aware of that. In disruption of the kind that the future wars between countries 
will not be fought over borders. Will be will be fought over hacking the uh, nuclear sites of enemies, and then they will be able to take them to a ransom. That's the kind of world that we are proceeding to. The kind of world that we will live in will be wars will be fought on water. Wars will be fought on fresh air. These are the kind of times that we are heading to. Guys, I'm not trying to paint a very gory picture of the future, but that's going to be the reality. And I think all of you sitting here as students need to step back and think that all of you need to adapt yourself to a different world that we will be living in. But this world of disruption will throw in a very different challenge, will throw in newer opportunities also. And I think I will not be doing justice uh, to the world of disruptions if I don't talk about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is no longer a fiction. It's no longer in the books. It has already become an order of the day. Some of the organizations I know of, that they have already started robotizations in organizations, and some of the rule-based work is already being done by robots. When you call up a call center and you hear a recorded voice, that is not a recorded voice. That's a robot talking to you. But that's a, that's, there is a hidden opportunity in that for all of you students who will be stepping into the outside world very soon. Because of robotization, it will throw out a very different set of jobs open to you. Those will be very innovative jobs. Those will not be rule-based jobs. Those will involve a lot of decision making. A lot of, they will challenge your gray cells to a very large extent. So I think it's time that all of you start thinking about that. So much for the change, and the change is always good. But don't we resist change? All of us, we get so used to our being in our comfort zone that we tend to avoid change. We tend to resist change. We do resist change. But should we? I think change always brings a lot of betterment to us. Imagine those Nokia phones which had come initially when the cell phone industry just started. And if we had not adopted to the change, or if Steve Jobs did not think about bringing about a change, would we have the smartphones today? So change, guys, is always for the better. So therefore, don't resist change. Don't fear change. But the question arises. All of you might ask me that, you know, I'm talking about change, change, and so much of change. But then who is to bring about the change? We have two options. One is that we can sit down and be a victim and keep on blaming the entire world or the happenings in the world and say that, you know, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? And all of that and be in a victim mode. And you know what? Being a mind coach, I understand that a mind loves to be in a victim mode because a bechara mind has nothing else to do. And when you're in a victim mode, you know, there is no ownership. And, and you know, all of us as humans, we don't like to take ownership. So one is that you can be in a victim mode. The choice is yours. But the other one is to take charge of your life. Decide what change you, bring, you need to bring about in yourself to be able to adapt to the next, next world, the changed order of the world. That is one side of the external change that you need to adapt to. But there is one more side of the coin. Change will bring in a huge amount of opportunities to all of you. But this volatile world will not always guarantee success, guys. There are times which are going to be good. There are times which are not going to be so good. So in order to be prepared for not so good times, you need to have a lot of inner strength. And I think that is something which is very, very important for all of you to build. Because no matter how skilled you are, how, uh, how, how able you are to face the outside world, if you don't have that inner strength, that is not going to work for you. There is a need for self-reflection. There is a lot of need for self-awareness. Falling is really good, you know, at times, because I think uh, all of you are aware that of a, of a very famous saying that adversity brings out the best in us. Unless and until we face adversity, there is, there is absolutely no way that you'll be able to relish the joys of success that will come your way. I'll quote a small incident in my life when I faced the biggest adversity in my life. This was a time when I was so used to being successful in life and moved from one job to another. 
there was a time when I had to face a crossroad. That was the biggest crossroad in my life, which was at a time when I was heading HR for a, for a very large corporation. And there was a complaint of sexual harassment. And the, the person who was the, who was, who, who, against whom the complaint was, a very senior executive in the organization and who would bring several million dollars to the organization. I was being the head of HR, I was told to investigate into the, into the complaint. And at the end of it, I found that this person was guilty. And of course, he had to be let go. And when I made the, made the report of investigation, I was told by the CEO that you change the report because the organization will suffer a lot if he goes, because he was earning several million dollars. I was on a real crossroad. And by the crossroad, because that was a time when my son was going to the university in the UK, and being a single parent, I had paid all my money for his education. And I said that, what do I do? And the next day I went and I resigned. I said, I'm not going to work for this organization. This does not have any morals or ethics. I did not know at that time where my next month's bills are going to be paid from. But then I took that decision. And that was the biggest crossroads in my life, guys. There are times when you'll have to take adverse, I mean, difficult decisions, not adverse decisions, difficult decisions, but then that is the time when your inner strength and inner conviction will come into the play. That, and all of you will face such situations sometime or the other, and that is the time when you will know that how building your inner strength and inner muscle is very, very important. Nobody from outside will come and motivate you guys. Motivation has to come inside out. You have to generate your own motivation. Times are not always good. Times will not always be bad. So in bad times, in difficult times, think this too shall pass. And this does pass, guys. That's my experience and that's my conviction. And it is you guys who are going to make the change happen. And if it's not you, who will? Ask yourself that question. And on that note, I leave it to you and wish you all the very best in your future.